forget about that canned lump of cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving. Enzy Blue Chef Star May has a fresh homemade recipe that you will want. And believe it, my friend, it's it's really rather easy to do, but good to have you. Yeah. I didn't even know that you could really make this homemade stuff, oh, yeah. but so you're going to show us the light. Yes, nice and easy. I tell people it's a one pot recipe. Uh -huh. You only got to put the things in, let it boil down, and then you can do it three days before Thanksgiving. The longer it sits, the better it is. That way you get this out of the way three days before and then yeah. work on the other work stuff. Work on everything else. Like I tell people, my Thanksgiving literally is like a full week's process. Mm -hmm. It takes three days for me to thaw my turkey the way I want. So <laughs> usually I make cranberry sauce when mm -hmm. I take the turkey out. Now everything is starting to go together, so it's a full thing for me. So start us off. What do you got going here? In here, I have water and orange juice. That's it. You guys will get the recipe online, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, frozen cranberries or fresh cram. Uh, and show fresh. them to the. You had orange peel in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put a couple orange peels in for flavor and uh, to help thicken my sauce. We just put those cranberries right in. And this is easy because you said these are frozen cranberries, right? Yeah, and so frozen cranberries produce their own waters because they've been sitting. So usually with the water, you wanna take it by half if you're gonna use frozen cranberries. Okay. I put a little bit of cinnamon, of course, right? Cinnamon is everything in the South. Mm -hmm. A pinch of salt, <laughs> right? Yes. And then of course you need sugar, it's the South, we need sugar. So we put sugar in there, you just cook it all together and let it boil. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is about a 10 or 15 minute process, the entire cranberry sauce, and you've created this wonderful new flavors. People are used to congealed in a can. I grew up with that. But That's all now I ever knew. I, I've learned something different. Mm -hmm. I can make it myself and I really enjoy doing it. And one of the things you say, as this is cooking, 10 to 15 minutes, but yep. when they start to kind of pop, the, the yeah, cranberries the start cranberries to pop? Yeah, the cranberries will really start to pop open. And once they start popping open, that's when you know you're almost to a point where you can start working with your cranberry sauce. Once they boil and start to pop, I just simply take a whisk and I stab them until, and I like to leave a few holes because it's cranberries. Well, so you do that. The mic came off, but that's oh, live right. TV. So keep on talking <laughs> with your, about what you're talking about. Okay, so you just kind of squish them with your whisk, and that's all you got to do. After about 10 to 15 minutes of all all of that, take it off. Okay. Put it in whatever Tupperware container you like to have it in. And that's what it looks like right there when it's yeah. all said and done. Beautiful. Now, one of the cool things that you've got going on is you've got some uh, classes that are going on right yes. now. Well, you'll talk about this and other holiday menu items. So yeah. tell me about that. Uh, my cooking classes are to teach people who don't know how to cook, how to be able to make a perfect Southern Thanksgiving dinner. Those classes will be over the month of October and November. By the time Thanksgiving get here, you will be great at Everybody's gonna even with the surprise. turkey. Even with the turkey, we even have. I have a dedicated a whole class just to the turkey since that is Thanksgiving. Right, and the dressing. Yeah, got, we got I know dressing. You have some we got dressing, cranberry right? sauce. We got sweet potatoes. It, we got everything that you would need. A, a great green bean casserole. I get you right where you need to be. You will be able to get all of those recipes for my cooking class on AnzieBlue.com. All right, fantastic there. She's got some great Southern. Thanksgiving cooking classes coming up and you can go to her website that is going to run through November to sign up for more information. Go to newschannel5.com and you will also find her cranberry sauce recipe. Go to her website as well to learn about her brunches on the weekend. Some good stuff there. Thank you, Meryl. It's been 25 years since the original publication of Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album, and it's still one of the best-selling memoirs of all time. The story of Mitch's weekly visits with Maury Schwartz, his dying college professor, is still inspiring readers to learn how to live. Mitch Album is joining us now as the book is re-released in a 25th anniversary edition. Mitch, always great to talk to you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Okay, so take us back a couple of decades. How did your Tuesdays with Maury start? And why did you write the book? Maury Schwartz had been a favorite college professor of mine. I majored in sociology because of him. We were very close in college. And then I graduated and became very ambitious and never called, never went back and saw him, nothing. And then 16 years later, 
happened to catch him on the Nightline program talking to Ted Koppel about what it was like to die from Lou Gehrig's disease. And that was the only way I found out that he was even sick. I called him up thinking I'd have a one-time conversation. That turned to a one-time visit, which turned to another visit, another visit. And we ended up visiting every Tuesday for all the Tuesdays he had left in his life and sort of took a last class together. And what's really important in life once you know you're going to die, as he did. Yeah. Talk about how Tuesdays with Maury changed your life, both as a writer and as a person. Well, up to that point, I had primarily been a sports writer. And if anybody stopped me in an airport, it was to ask me who was going to win the Super Bowl. Then all of a sudden, I wrote this little book, Tuesdays with Maury, to pay Maury's medical bills. It was supposed to be this tiny book, and no, nobody even wanted it. And suddenly, people were coming up to me in airports and saying, my mother died of cancer, and the last thing we did was read your book together. Can I talk to you about it? Wow. And so when that happens 100 times a day, weeks, years, months, you change and uh, you become more sensitive to those kinds of issues. And hopefully I, I have become exactly that. Talk about some of the lessons from the book that are still valid today. Well, everybody reads Tuesdays with Maury seems to gravitate to one or the other because we talk about everything from marriage and family, forgiveness, money, culture. And so depending on where you are in your life, you know, seen through the perspective of what really matters at the end, that's going to be the most important lesson to you. For me, it was one where I noticed people would come in to visit Maury and they'd want to cheer him up, but he would end up cheering them up. And I would say, I don't get it. You know, you're the one who's sick. And he'd say, yes, but taking from people makes me feel like I'm dying. Giving makes me feel like I'm living. And that was very profound to me. And I realized he was happier when he was giving. And that started my charitable work, which is now dominates my life. I, I run nine charities here in Detroit. I have an orphanage in Haiti that I'm at every month. And I never would have gotten involved with any of that, honestly, if Maury hadn't sort of shown me that, wow, he's dying and he's happy 